Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Ikru. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about the energy of 2024. I feel like every year is the same thing, right? We get to the end of the year, we've gone through the 12 months, the 52 weeks, and at the end is always the same conversation of, oh my God, I can't believe the time has gone so fast. <laughs> you know, or I can't believe the year is almost over. But here we are, nonetheless, the cycles of the, of the universe continue. <laughs> and so in numerology, the, the years, what you do is you take a number, right? For example, 2024, and you take each individual number. So two, zero, two, four, and then you add them together. So two plus zero plus two plus four equals eight. And that usually is the, the overall number uh, an overall energy of the year. Now, I do believe that there are numerology, like personal numerologies. Like if you know your life path number, for example, mine is five. So then I would take 2004, which is eight, plus five, which is what? 13, which then I can do. So when it comes to tarot numerology, I do want to talk to you guys about that a little bit because I've just arrived at my personal number, which is 13. We know that there are 24 major arcana in the tarot. Um, what you can do as well, if for some reason your personal number gets to 22, you can use the Fool as your personal card. Even though it is zero, a lot of people consider it to be the 22nd card, right? Because the Magician, for example, is number one. Right. And I don't believe there is any addition um, like we're doing right now that would arrive to zero. <laughs> so you can use the fool as number 22. Now, to make things a little bit more complicated, <laughs> as I just said, my personal number for the year is 13, which in the tarot is the death card, uh, which is right here which is the death card, number 13. So then this is a card of personal transformation. Um, creating the new, right? Uh, allowing things that no longer serve me to die away. So then that decomposition can feed new life. Now, 13, one plus three equals four. So I can also add the emperor to my personal number. So then I'm kind of working with two, um, with two cards, with two energies, which actually makes a lot of sense to me because, well, for me in particular. So um, I'm an Aries, I'm a sun Aries. So that's the emperor. The emperor is representative of the Aries. So that has to do with, and even if you're not an Aries, the, pers the emperor card has a lot to do with personal power. Uh, feeling confident, be, being in your own domain, which actually, in a minute, I'm going to talk about the energy of the number eight uh, and what it means in the tarot and what it means for us. And it has so much to do with personal power. Stay tuned. So here's the emperor. Uh, so for me, it's about letting things that don't make me, me, fall away. Limiting, limiting beliefs, uh, opinions, or, I, or ideas that people put in my head um, that maybe don't vibe with me. It's time to let that go so I can become my full self. So I can sit on the throne of Isis, right? Uh, and embody my personal power. So I love that. And also I'm a little bit intimidated by that because it sounds like it's going to be a very powerful year for me, I'm hoping for you as well, but also a very challenging year. Okay, so let's get to the number eight. So in the writer Wade Smith, which is one of our favorites, right? So I work with, personally, I work with the writer Wade Smith and the Thoth Tarot. These are my two go-tos. Um, I do have some personal ones as well. I love the Tarot of the Spirit. That's one of my favorites. But for teaching, and if you are new to tarot, I would advise you to get one of these two. Now, bit of a, of a side note here. 
the Rider Waite Smith is the number one deck out there. It's the most popular because I'm gonna say it's easy to read. It's easier than the Thoth Tarot. I love the Thoth Tarot, don't get me wrong. I really do, and I'm learning more and more. But here, for example, is the Four of Swords. It's just kind of like Four Swords, kind of like in a green X, and you go like, if you're new to tarot, you go like, what? I'm not quite sure what that means. There is a keyword here and it says truce, but you go, I don't really get it. What? What do you, I'm, I'm, I'm confused, right? But the Four of Swords in the Rider Waite Smith looks like this, which a lot of us interpret it as rest. Truce, right? Truce is a rest from combat, a rest from um, challenges and adversity which is, that's what, exactly what the Four of Swords is. But you can see it more here than you can in the Thoth. I highly encourage people to learn the Thoth. Whatever you think about Aleister Crowley, that's not what this is about. Um, I Whatever you believe him to be, I still find his deck to be incredibly powerful. And um, there's so much symbolism in it that, I highly recommend for those of us that want to learn, uh, that want to deepen more and more. Okay, so now that I talked about the comparison between the two, I want to make another comparison. So here is our Rider Waite Smith number eight, the Strength card. Now, in the Thoth, if you're working with the Thoth system, I don't see the two systems being that much different. I really don't. I see them as um, they kind of pile on each other. You know, uh, while this may be easier to read, it strips away a lot of the symbolism because they're meant to be arcanas. Arcanas equal secrets. Whereas the Thoth, it kind of really imbues the image with a lot of symbolism. So it may be a little bit harder for initiates to read if you're just starting out, but eventually the more you learn, it'll open it up to you in deeper ways, I find. But to me, they're both really deep. It's really about your personal preference. I love the art on both. I'm a little bit more inclined to love the art of the Thoth a little bit more, but that's a personal preference. It doesn't make you a better reader or a worse reader. <laughs> anyway, so the comparison I wanna make is that Aleister Crowley, he kind of creates this bit of a, so, in the Rider Waite Smith, there it goes from Aries to Pisces in a linear format, right? Uh, Aries is number four. Pisces is the Moon card, which is what number eighteen. So it takes you in this linear thing, or in a circular thing, if you're putting the cards in a circle. But Alistair Crowley kind of creates a snap uh, in this linear motion, so he switches the number eight for the number 11. So what he does is number 11 is meant, well, yeah, uh, in the in the Rider right Waite Smith, let me grab it for you guys. Number 11 is justice. And here he uses it, it's called adjustment in the Thoth, but it's number eight. Um, the lust card or the strength card is number 11, where the strength card is number eight in the Rider Waite Smith. Now, it is entirely up to you if you work with the thought exclusively and you go, no, my number eight is gonna be adjustment slash justice. I'm, I'm gonna go for that. I love that because I'm gonna explain when I pull out the tree of life for us why this makes a lot of sense. But really that's one reason why tarot can be confusing, but truthfully, it's not about confusion. It, it reveals to me, and I hopefully to you as well, how complex and multifaceted tarot can be because they both make sense for the position they're in, in, in both situations. I am going to focus more on the strength card in this video. Um, so hopefully that makes sense to you. But if you work, again, exclusively with the thought, listen more to the messages that I'm giving you versus like, it has to be the eight in the strength card. It's not what I'm saying at all. 
follow your own system always. Okay, so number eight or strength or slash lust. Now the lust card isn't about sexual lust. It's more about a lust for life. There is a sense here about being alive. So the strength card is ruled by Leo. And Leo is ruled by the sun, which is what? All about shining our light, all about bringing clarity, even both cards. Look at how much, I feel like I wanna say sacral and solar plexus energy. Look at all the oranges and the yellows. It's such a bright, vibrant energy. There's a pulsation here, an energy. Also, what you can do is bring out the minor arcanas as well, which are the eight of um, the eight of ones, the eight of cups, the eight of swords, and the eight of pentacles or discs. And they all have to do with strength in some way. Eight of ones is bringing strength in movement, right? All these ones. You can always see them a little bit differently. Either they are kind of like leaning because they're landing down or they're leaning upwards because they're flying upwards. But either way, they have to do with this distance, with this launching forward in energy. And the ones are the element of fire. Talk about Leo and fire energy, right? Um, so the eight of wands is about this launching forward. Now, how do we launch forward? very similar to the death card in some way. The Eight of Cups is about leaving something behind, right? To go forward in our journey. This to me is a card of, a, of sacrifice. What is it that we kind of feel like we need to leave behind, right? Maybe you don't have the answer right now. So then that takes us the Eight of Swords, this mental entrapment. What is it in this card, in this energy that is kind of keeping you trapped, right? I, I nicknamed this card the, the mental cage. This person is surrounded by these swords. Swords are the suit of the mind and thought process. Also communication. So the swords are the element of air. So think of air, think of thoughts, think of like the air that comes out of your mouth. But it's also about expression if you're an artist, for example, or a writer. Uh, but anyway, the Eight of Swords is, see how they're bound, right? This person here is bound and the blindfold as well. Which to me, the blindfold is really about faith. Uh, believing that if you move forward without being able to see, things can unfold. But if I stay in my fear, I'm going to continue being the same spot I, I was last year. I think that also brings us back to the idea that everyone, not everyone, right? But I think most people, the conversation every every end of year is, oh my gosh, can you believe it's the end of the year already? Can you believe it's a new year? Can you believe how fast it's gone? You know, oh my God, it's 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 gone by in a flash. And I feel like the energy behind that is, quote, I haven't accomplished much. Quote, it went so fast, what did I do? Quote, I'm in the same place I was last year. I didn't I didn't make much movement. When it's not true, I, I believe we're constantly moving. Um, because that's the the way the world works. The earth spins. Um, day is gonna become night and it's gonna become day. No matter if you're laying in bed all day or not, it's still going to be tomorrow, right? But the question is, what are the entrapments of the mind? And then eight of pentacles. What are we working towards to get ourselves away from the situation, to get our uh, emotional state right, and to get us moving forward? The eight of the eight of discs <laughs> is a card of practical action. Really, it's a card of practical action. All these other three things happen when the eight of discs is in motion. At least that is my perspective. Because when it comes to the planes, especially in the tree of life, we deal with the top, which is fire, the kind of top middle, 
is water, the top bottom is air, and then the very bottom, which is earth, is our physical realm. So things are happening in the astral, but things really start coming to fruition. They really start moving when we step into work, when we get to work like this eight of discs, okay? Um, hopefully that's making sense to you guys and hopefully that's helping you guys in some way. Now, I do wanna talk about how, um, oh, actually, let me show you guys in the Tree of Life where all of this is, okay? So here's the tree of life. Don't be too imitated. Don't be too intimidated <laughs> by it. It is a very complex symbol, but we learn, at least I do, a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna be focusing on these three today. So the red one is Gabora, also translates to strength or severity, and this is ruled by Mars. We have this bridge right here. This is actually the card of strength. So all these lines here, there are 22 emanations or 22 paths. Of course, they equate to the 22 major arcana. And then these um, circles, or they're called Sephiroth, they are kind of like worlds. Each of them is ruled by a planet. So think of them as like worlds or dimensions, if you want to, or energies that are bringing it in. But they also have to do with the minor arcana cards. So Gabura is number five. So the fives all live in this world. Hesed, which is a card of mercy. These are all the fours. They bring structure. They bring order to things. This is Tifereth, which is beauty ruled by the sun. And it's the, uh, the knights, or if you're working with a Thoth, the princes, and the number six. So all the sixes kind of live here in this world. <laughs> okay, so... Let's focus on this line right here. This is the strength card. Also, it doesn't matter. Another reason why, like, for me, the Thoth and the Rider Waite Smith don't really change that much. Because <clears throat> if you are placing the Thoth cards on here, this uh, emanation is now not adjustment or justice. It's still strength or lust. So lust is right here, and justice is right here, or adjustment is right here, even if you're working with a thought system. So really, I think, in my opinion, I think Alistair Crowley just kind of want to be a rebel a little bit. I mean, he has his reasons, but again, I don't really find that much difference. And in my personal practice, you don't have to vibe with this, but in my personal practice, I don't really go for this eight and 11 switch. I work with the lust card slash strength card as the number eight, or at the very least as it is placed on the tree of life. Okay, so Gabura right here is ruled by Mars. It's the card of uh, the Sephira, excuse me, of severity. This is where adversity, strife, challenges, this, when you're trying to create something, Hesed, which is ruled by Jupiter, Jupiter is the all benevolent, right? Jupiter just, I kind of feel like Jupiter is like this benevolent father who's like, yeah, you want to do this? Do it. I, I believe in you. Go for it. Very supportive. But Gabora is much more severe. Gabora is like, uh, no, you can't do that. Uh, I'm going to put obstacles in your way. But it's not about saying no to you and discouraging you. I feel like Hesed or Mercy is saying, hey, go for it. This is like, I'm gonna put challenges in your way, not to discourage you, but to help you learn, to help you get stronger, and to help you really figure out and question, is this what I really want? Am I willing to put up with the obstacles that this creation brings me in order for me to deal with, like, to deal with the day-to-day -day things, right? I think a lot of entrepreneurs kind of go through this question probably on a daily basis, <laughs> which is like, I want this thing and I want to expand and grow, but challenges come, right? Not every day is going to be a $1,000 sale day or more or whatever. 
and then you go, ah, oh, do I really want that? So the strength card that we're dealing with today, the lust card is, not today, the, the 2024, the year of 2024 is this balancing. Also, I touched on earlier how adjustment or justice also still makes sense in here because it's about balancing these two energies. These two energies are polar opposites. One says yes, one says, are you sure? You know what I mean? One gives you like this open road, one gives you blockages, right? It's almost like, it's reminding me of Ganesha right now. He's the remover of obstacles, but Ganesha also puts obstacles in the way. Um, he can close doors for you to go, hey, not this door, try that one. That one is open. So is that, there's a balance, there's a tennis match, there's a ping pong that's happening here. But it's also going to take a lot of inner strength for us to deal with this ping pong match, with this tennis match, with this back and forth. Also, um, the Hebrew letter for the strength card or the lust card is called Teth. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> you, can, you can teach me below if I didn't say it correctly. And it means serpent. It means the serpent. Now, the serpent, it depends on your culture. It depends on what you believe in. The serpent has so many different um, meanings, right? The symbolism of the serpent is so rich. And I love that. I love that because I feel like all of them relate to this. Because I'm, I'm being reminded of two things. So the story of Shiva, for example, and why he's blue. I don't know the full story. So please, if you're into it, go search it yourself. But I believe there's a, a story where Shiva, the Hindu god Shiva, drinks the poison and he holds it in his throat. And then his throat turns blue. And I believe that's why a lot of his depictions are him as a blue being. Also, I'm being reminded of the peacock. Um, peacocks are shiny like that, right? Their feathers are so shiny and beautiful and vibrant because they actually eat snakes. <laughs> they do eat serpents, um, which can be poisonous, right? So there is this idea when it comes to the strength card and the serpent of drinking in the poison of Gabora and transmuting it into beauty so taking us right here so see the beauty of and another reason why i love the tree of life as well so number four is has said so the path that we're taking is here's like the light right this is source we go from two three and then we jump to four five six and then seven eight nine ten but we're focusing on these three top here. So we are on number four. And this is like, oh, you want to do something. You want to go for it. Yes, absolutely. Now we, we go through the strength bridge. This is almost like the poison that we take. Now we go through justice. What does that mean? We go through the balancing act, right? We go through this transmutation period of I saw the light I saw the good now I'm drinking this poison and it's bitter but it's not poison it's medicine I'm drinking this medicine um, from the universe right of course all this is a metaphor we we when I say poison or medicine it's really the challenges of life that are teaching us something but we're taking it in and I can choose the justice card which means I can choose to to see the good and the bad and transmute them. I can choose to, it's not about judgment, it's about analyzing. I can choose to analyze, is this challenge defeating me and making me feel like, oh, I hate this, I hate life, I don't wanna go on, I don't wanna do this anymore. Or am I choosing to go, what is this teaching me? How am I growing and learning from this experience? That's the justice card, taking us to the sun which is about clarity. It's about understanding. It's about taking these two, marrying them, 
and transmuting them and almost like bringing them together, right? As they say, justice is blind, right? So I feel like that's a metaphor for, it's not about seeing it as good or bad. It's about seeing how they both work together. You know, I feel like I almost want to say um, in the matrix, right? There was the red and the blue pill. It's almost like the purple pill, even though purple is like down here, there's the moon, but it's almost like this, this union of the two, this purple pill energy. It's not about one is bad and one is good and I'm only gonna go for the good. We need both and achieving that understanding. Adjustment, justice, the scales. We need both sides of the scale to achieve balance, right? And of course, the sun in the middle, the sun rules Leo and it's right here, the bridge of Leo the sun right here kind of creating this triangle of energy hope that makes sense to you guys <laughs> hope that's making sense uh i want to pull some cards for us so let's do that you have been with me already uh on this journey and i really appreciate it didn't mean for this video to be so long but i feel like i do make kind of long videos and i want to try to make shorter ones but let me know what you guys think maybe you guys like the long the long versions. But my focus is to teach more. Uh, I want to show more the tree of life. I want to show more these connections that tarot has, right? Okay, so let's get some cards for 2024. We have the nine of discs gain. I'm gonna get two more, please. <laughs> the fives. We talked about the fives, right? The fives are Gabora, which is strife. But I love in this card how the background is is yellow. It's the sun. So through strife, it brings us clarity and understanding. All right. Okay, let's get one more. Ah, talking about the sun right here. We got the sun. Actually, two cards came out together. So the sun and then the six of wands, victory. <sighs> yes. Listen. A lot of positive cards for 2024. We have Nine of Pentacles, Gain. Nine of Pentacles, actually it's right here in front of me, that's really funny, when I separated this deck. Um, I love to teach with the Giant right away, Smith. It's a little big for me to shuffle it like and work with it, but I like for it to, te uh, to teach because it's like bigger. Anyway, Nine of Discs, Nine of Pentacles, all about gain, all about self-confidence. You see how like this one is a little bit, it's just symbols and colors. And I think that's really beautiful. But this one is a bit more, like we see this person that's like, I feel good, I look good, right? There is a posture to them. There is a an attitude to them that I really like. And uh, they're holding a falcon and there's grapes, which are all about lush, um, luxury, you know? So there is a lot of gain here, but we don't gain anything if you don't, strife for it <laughs> there is a fight here there is a struggle but i don't actually no i want to take back the word struggle there is a fight towards it there is a energy and an effort that's the word i kept missing effort the five of ones the card of effort i gotta put effort into it you know sometimes i may feel like you're swimming against the stream but I'm putting in the effort for my gain. I just talked about how behind this car, there's a yellow, there's a sun, and the sun came out right after, that's awesome. So here we're dealing with the sun card, very, very related to what we just talked about here. And also the six of wands too, because the sixes live right here. So check it out. So we are dealing with five. The fives live in this world, Gaborah, severity or strength which is a card of strife. Then through adjustment, through finding that balance, through strength and adjustment, 
we achieve the sun. We achieve the world of the sun here. We achieve victory and higher understanding. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I feel like the message here is that this year, especially, I feel like if you're, if you're watching me, if you're watching this, if you're into this work of tarot, of spirituality, of shadow work, of self-knowledge and self-discovery, you're already on your way. And this year, 2024, especially the year of strength, pay attention to the strifes because that's where the strength is. You know, when we ask God for patience, do we think God gives us patience? <laughs> no, God gives us opportunities to act patience on, <laughs> to act on patience. He's gonna give us annoying people. He's gonna give us annoying situations. So we can learn how to take deep breaths and be patient with what we're dealing with. If you're asking, if you're asking God for strength, for patience, for more money, for discipline has been a big one for me. God is going to give you the very opposite of that. He's going to give you situations to strengthen your muscles. It's, I mean, I clearly I'm not a bodybuilder or anything, but <laughs> to use the analogy of like working out, strength is lifting 250 pounds. <laughs> I can't do that right now, but I can lift 10. <laughs> I can lift 20 maybe, but I can work through sweating, through picking up a little bit heavier weight every time I can reach 250 pounds. So through you sweating a little bit, right? We talked about the eight, of wands. This is the another card of eight. The eight of wands is movement forward. And especially we talked about the eight of discs. This is putting in the work. This is a sweatshop. This is the sweatshop. All right. So through sweating, through putting in the discipline, the effort, the work through strife, we get to strengthen ourselves. And then we reach the sun, victory and gain. All right, sounds like a very powerful year. 2024 sounds like a challenging year, but a victorious year, okay? And don't beat yourself up too hard because this, it, this isn't, this, God is not a capitalist, <laughs> okay? The universe is not a capitalist. The universe isn't saying, hey man, you're depressed. I don't care, do the work. No, if the best you can do that day is just open your eyes and get out of bed and take a shower. And that's all you've done and all you were able to do. You used 100% of your strength that day. On the other side of the spectrum, if you're able to, to make many calls and answer to many emails and work out and, and go for a run and see friends and do all that and do everything on your to-do list, you also used 100% of your energy because the next day you might not have all of that. But remember that every day what you do, you are using 100% of your strength. Now that 100% can have different levels. I hope that's making sense to you guys because it's not about all of us being go, 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 go 24 seven. A lot of us are struggling with certain things and sometimes that strength that you're seeing isn't physical, but it's mental or emotional or spiritual, okay? So if you're dealing with mental strife, and again, all you had energy for was to just get up and brush your teeth, you did a really good job. And the universe isn't like you didn't do enough to achieve your gains and to achieve the sun. The universe is asking you just to be you. The universe is asking you to have the strength to be you. The sun, all this yellow energy coming up for us 
right? The sun right here is where we shine, right? What's your sun sign, right? That's where we kind of like shine ourselves the most and how people see us. So all the universe is asking you to do is allow yourself to shine in whatever capacity you have at this moment, okay? Try not to judge yourself so much. And with that being said, have an immensely victorious year. It's going to be amazing. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time.